Today we are looking at 15 sneaky starts for fantasy football week 2 and these are supposed to be sneaky starts. They're not supposed to be starts. These are not for basic traditional leagues, especially for week 2. You should be pretty much set. However, if you're in a jam, if you're looking for contrarian options for DraftKings, FanDuel, DFS, if you're looking for some random outliers, if you're looking for stashes, this is going to be the video for you because we're going game by game, matchup by matchup, just looking at the game script and just finding that ancillary player to randomly go off. What jabroni can score fantasy points this week? Most of these are not going to hit. These are not picked to hit. These are meant to find contrarian random jabroni players that could potentially do something from this week and sometimes these videos do hit we've had a few last year where over half of them hit sometimes they do so you want to watch the full thing but you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're doing the must starts tomorrow you need to follow that we're helping you set your lineups with these videos we're combing the waiver wire every day we're doing deep dives on those waiver wire players all the top guys all the trending guys on top of helping you set your lineups click that button stop missing out but our first sneaky guy of the day alexander madison he's getting that passing game work the raiders might be trailing the ravens ravens is a tough defense they might be trying to get the ball out quickly against the ravens that being said i would not be surprised if alexander madison gets a few extra check downs maybe another five target game maybe another game where he gets some opportunity in the passing game Jalen Naylor and when I look at my confidence factor in this one it's not very good because it's against the Niners we know where the ball is going at for the Niners so you got to look at the Viking side and the Viking side is Justin Jefferson and Aaron Jones and that being said Jalen Naylor because the Niners defense is nasty that's going to push targets to go in weird areas and that could allow him to see a couple extra targets in this game might see some end zone looks as well Rico Dowdle against the Saints because he saw a good bit of workload here. Eight rushing attempts. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 32% share. Sharing the backfield with Zeke. And this is a matchup where the Cowboys could route. They could play well. And if he gets those goal line looks, if he gets more than one target, if he busts out that big gain, he might be able to score for you in fantasy football. Quentin Johnston, I know you guys hate him from last year. Busted as a rookie, but Josh Palmer's questionable dealing with an injury. He saw 20% target share last week. That's on a low volume offense though, but we are in on 82.8% .8 of the routes. Second most on the team. He's getting volume. He's getting opportunity, and he's going to be pushed downfield as well. He's a boundary wide receiver. You're playing against the Panthers too, who sucks, but this is going to be a low volume, low scoring game. So the odds of this hitting is not too great. But the odds of him just surprising you could be good as well. So Quentin Johnson, look at him. A.D. Mitchell, and he's a sneaky guy every week because the air yards, because he's running a lot of routes. He was in on 75% of the routes last week, ran 18 routes, had a 26.3% target share. When he's out there, he gets targeted. He out-targets Alec Pierce. He gets those deep balls, 16.4 ADOT. So he's getting volume, and he was two missed passes away from going off that picture right there was from one of those there was two of them ar-15 anthony richardson missed on him deep twice he could have had a big time performance and that's what i say about those will fuller type wide receivers those wide receivers who can stretch it down the field that could be up or down on any given sunday because they bring in one or two of those passes kind of like what alec pierce did you're getting a massive fancy performance Jalen McMillan he's no surprise he's running just about as many routes as Mike Evans and Chris Godwin he's going to get some targets there's going to be matchups where he blows up we got a 51 and a half over under here so there's a chance that the sparks could ignite with McMillan Braylon Allen this is a nasty matchup. I'm not looking at the Titans for something like this. And when you look at the Jets, it could be some random targets to Lazard or something like that. But in garbage time, maybe some goal line looks. Maybe Braylon Allen sucks air over the end zone. Zach Charbonnet. 
possibly a random score, possibly catching a couple extra passes. That could lead to fantasy production. He scored last week. Something like that could happen. It wouldn't be mighty. It's Kenneth Walker's job. But still, this is an ugly game. 38.5 over under. Patriots, slow volume. Seahawks, slow volume. Slow, slow, slow. Elijah Moore gets volume, gets opportunity. We're playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars. That could pump some targets over the middle. He gets moved around a lot. Ran on 92 0.9% of the routes last week while seeing a 14% target share, which isn't great, but still he's out there. He's getting opportunities. He saw six targets, but that was a game where the game script broke in the Cowboys' favor where they had to play catch up when they couldn't with Deshaun Watson, but still he's out there running on most of the routes sucking air on the field theo johnson is a sneaky bet at tight end 76 percent route participation rate and saw four targets in his first ever nfl game and is playing the washington commanders this could be an interesting situation an interesting season for theo johnson michael wilson ran on 92.1 percent of the routes ran on 85 percent of the routes last year he's a boundary wide receiver he's on the outside and creates separation with good route running he's very technical this is a game script that might get pushed we saw Greg Dortch get a lot of targets last week. Those were targets that funneled to the slot and underneath. This could be different where it goes to the outside a little bit more and look at Michael Wilson might be getting some opportunity. Yoshi's back here. Ran on 100% of the routes last week. We're against the Chiefs. If he brings in a couple balls and they're deep enough, maybe, maybe. But Vele, 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 Vele. Got targeted last week, saw eight targets, slot wide receiver, and the Steelers gives up yards to the slot. Ray Ray McLeod went off, not because he's better than B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and Darnell Moody. He's in the slot. They capitalized on that against the Steelers. Look for the Broncos to do the same because that's what Bo Nix likes to do. He likes to dink and dunk. Vele, Vele, Vele. Chicago Bears, and we're throwing in Caleb Williams. Go watch last week's game. He was bad. Scored seven fantasy points per sleeper. Could be different in your league. But we're going up against the Texans. Can he keep up with CJ Stroud? We're looking at Darnell Mooney, but the huge question here is Kirk Cousins cooked. Is he done? Maybe there is a reason why they brought in Michael Penix. But Kirk Cousins might be cooked. Mooney saw a 13% target share, three targets, but ran on 100% of the routes. He's going to be seeing deep targets. This might be a game script that gets pushed due to them playing against the Eagles. Teams like to pass against the Eagles, but they did upgrade the secondary there. But again, Darnell Mooney running a lot of routes, seeing some opportunity. Those are the 15 sneaky starts for week two. Let me know who's that jabroni you got to put in that lineup. Who's that guy that you don't want to start, but you have to this week? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching, catch you on the next video.